Joe Rogan must never and will never interview President Trump on his podcast. And the reason for it is simple. They will destroy him. They will crush him into dust. He won't know what hit him. He feels impervious right now because that's what fame does. He feels bulletproof. He feels that he is impenetrable. That his fame, his glory, his his wherewithal, his notoriety, everything about him will protect him. No. He has more red dots on him than you can imagine. They want him out and they want him gone. And you saw that before when he dared, dared to test the water, to stick his toe in the water, so to speak, to, to kind of feel around when it came a uh, time during the COVID mania vaccine discussion and the like. He had no idea. He, he just thought, I'm Joe Rogan. I'm, uh, I'm, I, I come with a good soul, and I believe he does open mind. I'm interested in the truth. I'm interested in a lot of things. As you can see, by virtue of the way I handle my show, I have a lot of of subjects that I discuss on a regular basis. Loads of loads of topics from, from, you know, the pyramids to particle physics to artificial intelligence to to, uh, comedians who have the mentality of a soap dish dropping the F-bomb every five minutes. He is... It's that multiplicity of subject matter that I find to be absolutely exquisite. Plus, he has an absolute, and I say this in the best way possible, and I consider myself in the same condition or the same situation, almost a childlike fascination for everything. No questions out of the, is out of the question. No, no question is too dumb. No question is too obvious. Just, just a pure and raw and an unbridled fascination with a lot of different subjects. And with that comes, unfortunately, the belief that there will be no repercussions, that there will be no problems. Joe Rogan has become such a target for everybody because he grew too big, too fast, and it's not that he grew too fast, but he, but that he set signals it's kind of like an abatement raptor who kind of like sweeps through the valley and says, I'm in charge here. I'm setting the parameters of what I'm doing. I'm not playing your game. I'm not going to be some George Clooney hack. I'm not going to be some sock puppet for the left or some some uh, uh, wind sock for the right. I'm my own man. Okay. And that scares people because what the radical left wants, what the shadow government wants, is somebody that they can control and crush, and scare, and own, like George Clooney, and a veritable list of other hacks that I would need the rest of the day just to read their names. President Trump had best stay away from Joe Rogan as well, because Joe Rogan will have to be in a position to score one, to hurt Trump, to do something. If Joe Rogan appears to be at all less than vicious, let me say this again, if he appears in any way to be less than predatory in his take and his attack and in his uh, pursuit, if you will, of President Trump, he's through. They will destroy him. They will finish him off. Finish him off the way they did. (laughs) Laughably, when Neil Young said, I'm going to take my catalog away from Spotify. And the music world said, who? Neil Young, who? Cowgirl in the Sand? Harvest? Anyway. But but that got his attention. That's why he did this rather, I think it was a very interesting, very sincere, very conciliatory. Some might say a fawning uh, expiation regarding his, his tack, an apologia. And I'm sorry, I may have cool, but I didn't know what I was doing. Okay, he learned his lessons. So he said, basically, as the kids would say, F this noise, I'm not going near that again. I'm going to talk to Joey Diaz about getting gooned and weird stuff you do with mayonnaise in the back, you know, the dressing room of a comedy 
club. I, I, I want to do that and talk about, you know, pyramids and, and my usual stuff. I'm not going to go near this. And if he goes through, if he even approximates President Trump and doesn't skewer him, go after him, if he doesn't read from the list of the questions and the positions that will be presented to him, he won't admit this, but he will be told specifically, this is what you're going to do. Because when you're the number one podcast platform in the world, I would think, you are not going to sit back and wing it. You're not going to come back and say, hey, you know what? I, I really like this Trump feller because I started off thinking he was a bit of a of a jerk, but now I really like him. And I and moreover, I think he's far more sincere and far better for the country and the direction of our republic than old Kamala Harris. That ain't going to happen either. So nobody's going to like the interview. Trump fans are going to say that either, depending upon what, what Joe did, either he was too harsh or spot on, if he was conciliatory, if he was nice, Trump fans are going to say that's the way to go. The Kamala group which is, of course, the radical left uh, folks. And I hate these little uh, favorite things here, but the reactions. But the Kemala group, uh, uh, again, will destroy him. He will, he will see so much change if he doesn't go in for the kill. Now, Lex Friedman doesn't have to do this because Lex Friedman is in a different, a different plane and in a separate video I discussed that. But Joe's different. Joe should best stick with what he's doing, not even get near it, not even get near him because it's a lose-lose. He will never go strong enough. He will never go long. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Joe is not also a political animal. That's not his and when I say political, I mean nuanced. I mean to really jump into this thing, uh, you know, feet first, so to speak, into the world of, 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 you know, conspiracy theories and history and trying to get rid of this left-right, you know, good, bad, mannequin. I mean, this is, this is not, he's great. I don't want to see his career ruined. I don't want to see him destroyed. I think he's fantastic. He has done more to inspire knowledge and interest and fascination over so many subjects than he will ever understand or ever grasp. I don't want to see him hurt. I don't want to see him in any way lose this platform. Uh, that's why he's got to stay away from it. And President Trump can always use the fact that he's being talked about, he's being discussed, but he should stay away from this as well. Because remember, they're not going to treat President Trump fairly. They can't. If Joe, if Joe Rogan treats President Trump fairly, that's it. He's done. He's through. Something, something will happen. Something, Spotify, somewhere down the road, will find that some European regulatory, I don't know, who knows, things we don't know about, things that go on in the background. You're doing great where you are. Great line from, oh, I think it was Magnum Forrest, Dirty Harry. He says, a man's got to know his limitations. And a show's got to know its limitations. And you also have to recognize the fact that there's nothing wrong with not saying everything. As I have always advocated since day one, Joe, pick the hill you want to die on. This ain't the one. You're doing just fine. What do you think about this? What do you think? You watching this for the first time? Welcome. I want to see what you think. Put your thoughts and comments down. And whatever you do, whatever you do, I ask, I beseech, I implore, and I import you and you to, dare I say, comment as you see fit. <laughs>